and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to the review of a watch brand that is brand new to me and therefore brand new to the channel. It's Serica. Serica are a relatively new French brand, only launching in 2019, but their watches are made in Switzerland. And they're a brand that has been popping up on my radar more and more over the last six months or so. You know how this goes, I'm sure. You begin to see them elsewhere on YouTube and then they appear on Instagram. And before you know it, the true bellwether of the success of any watch company these days comes along, Mr. P buys one. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much once again, Mr. P, for buying a watch so that I don't have to. But he didn't buy it for me. He bought it because it's gorgeous. There are a number of design elements here that I haven't seen elsewhere combined in the one watch. Now that makes for a really, really interesting look overall. But you saw the title today, you saw the thumbnail today, I'm sure. As beautiful as this watch is, this particular unit does not function as it should. There's an issue regarding the operation of the stem, the crown, the movement, whatever. Apparently it was a known problem with the first batch of these 5303s last year, that's the model number, but it had been resolved for this current production run. Apparently not though, Mr. P's is pretty much box fresh. It was only delivered last month, November 2022. So whether it is the crown, the stem or the movement, Serica clearly still have not got to the bottom of the problem. In fact, I had a chat with another former owner of the 5303 who had a similar problem and I'll show you his correspondence with the company later in the video. It seems to me like the brand are now trying to spin the problem as a native feature of the movement and offer refunds but not repairs. I'm just not sure that's the right thing to do. Regardless, it's a bit of a shame for two reasons. It's a shame for Mr. P because it takes the shine off what is otherwise a lovely watch and it's a shame for Serica because they are gonna have to deal with an angry Mr. P. I've seen him angry, believe me, you don't wanna have to deal with that. So have you bought one of these Serica 5303s? How is the movement stem crown operation in yours? Is it a deal breaker or have you forgiven it because of the good looks and accepted it as a native feature? I would love to hear from owners of these things. Please leave a comment. I'm sure everybody would be really interested to read some comments, but that's for later. This is for now. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Okay, let's get it out of the box, then talk about this issue nice and early. It's a pretty simple recycled cardboard outer containing a nice flip case inner box. Now I'm gonna stun you here by showing off my fluency in French. I bet you didn't know that about me. The text says, thank you sincerely, your Serica watch is the result of many years of passionate work. We hope it finds its way into your life and uh, carry all the countless memories that are yet to be created. Et voila. You gotta love a typo though, eh? Even on a $1,000 plus product. A suitable tiny instruction manual accompanies each watch and it comes with a two year warranty, by the way, which is nice. It also comes with a very Rolex style plastic wax sealed tag, but none of that really matters. What matters is the watch and I think the watch is a stunner. I mean, that's just lovely, isn't it? Now they call this the Serica 5303, apparently a reference to March 1953, which saw the launch of the dive watch, really. The Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, the Zodiac Seawolf, and of course the Rolex Submariner were all released that month and that year. So Serica are very cleverly acknowledging the early dive watch aesthetic that underpins this model, but this design is not a homage of any of those three or anything else, really probably more vintage Omega than anything else if you had to pin it down. But it's gorgeous. Look at that split bezel, half brushed stainless steel, half ceramic, one for hours, one for minutes, a lovely piece of design. And I'll talk more about the bracelet later as well, made specifically for this watch. It combines the best of a mesh, but with articulated female end links. It's really nice. But let's talk about the problems that I and others have experienced with this Serica 5303. Or more specifically, let's talk about its movement. This watch features not an Eta, nor a Salita, nor even a Miota, but a Soprod Newton. This is a relatively new movement by the Swiss manufacturer and it's a drop-in replacement for the Eta 2824 and its many clones. It has a slightly better power reserve at 44 hours, a balanced bridge which apparently should help with stability and accuracy, and indeed this top spec model as fitted to the 5303 is rated at plus or minus four seconds per day, but it's not COSC certified. But the crown action is pretty dreadful. It's reluctant to hack. Sometimes you get a distinct pop, 
Sometimes you don't. Sometimes the movement stops and then starts going again, as you can see here. And I'm still not entirely convinced as to whether this one has a go state position or not. That's how indistinct and muddy the crown is to use. Sometimes it's really springy and when you try to set it, you can see that super sharp minute hand drifting a little bit forward, like a, like a minute forwards, which obviously isn't great if you're trying to set the movement accurately. And sometimes it does this thing where... It's neither fish nor fowl in terms of its position. The second hand still runs, but you can adjust the time, but only backwards. If you try and roll the crown forwards, you get a clicking sound like you normally get when you're adjusting a date. So you've got three separate symptoms of the one problem then. A reluctance to hack, some tension somewhere moving the hands even after the watch hacks, and then that weird thing where the movement adjusts backwards despite the fact that it isn't in the hacking and adjustment position. This watch is 1300 euros, which is roughly 1350 US dollars at the current exchange rate, plus or minus taxes, of course, as always. The question then becomes, is this acceptable quality control? Are you okay with your 1300 euro watch behaving like this? If you are, good for you, enjoy your watch, you should probably stop watching this video now. If you're not, and you contact Serica about the problems, well, the response, it seems, has varied. There are videos on YouTube like this one from exactly one year ago detailing the problem. And in that video, the owner said that there was a fix and repair process had already been established. You send the watch to a specified watchmaker who repairs it and then sends it back. Now, owners were initially out of pocket, but then were refunded for postage costs, etc. I believe that was what was offered to owners of the first batch of these from 2021. Here is the email to prove it. However, it seems like Seneca's position has changed in 2022. I spoke to somebody this week about this who sent me their correspondence with the brand. This is all on Watch You Seek, by the way, I'll leave a link in the description of the video, of course. I believe these emails are from one of the two brand owners as opposed to an employee. Apparently, the issues with the crown slash stem slash movement are no longer a problem. They're not an issue, but in fact a native feature inherent of the Soprod Newton. Let me explain. Let me explain. Is that called brandsplaining as opposed to mansplaining? The email goes on to acknowledge that the hacking and time setting mechanisms are somewhat a little on the soft side, but that Soprod are doing a great job. Best of all, it seems to suggest that in full consideration of this, Serica chose the movement in what they describe as a well informed and educated decision and intend to stick to it. They further describe the problems as youth issues. The folly of youth, eh? The brand were pleasant enough, but the bottom line being that the owner who sent me this thread was not offered a repair because what's to repair, right? It's now a native feature. They were offered only a refund. They took up the brand on that offer, but they lost money on shipping and exchange rates. A couple of hundred, they told me, which has got to hurt. From reading the thread, they were not alone. So it seems then that the brand are doubling down on these Soprod Newton movements. They acknowledge the problem, but are no longer offering to fixing it, putting it down to teething troubles and saying that the benefits outweigh the disadvantages. I'm sorry, I just don't know about that. The advantages seem fairly minimal compared to having customers send their watches back and people like me making videos moaning about them even though I didn't buy one. If it was me, I would have dumped Sockprod after that first batch, ensured all old customers got what they needed to make them happy, and then put an Eta or a Salita in the back of all future 5303s, including Mr. P's. And shout out to Sockprod, by the way, for selling these dodgy movements in the first place. Apparently, the development for the Newton took three years, Perhaps it should have taken four. I return again to what I said in the intro of the video. It's a shame because the watch is lovely. The dimensions, as you can see on screen now, are very pleasant. It's slim for a 300 meter diver, not that it really needs 300 meters of water resistance, and the diameter and lug to lug both go nicely with the mid-century aesthetic. Case finish is pleasant as well, with some lovely high polish sections running from the middle of the case to the lug tips, much larger than usual. And I'm not even gonna complain about the unbranded crown. I'm sure you spotted, Serica branding is kept to a minimum throughout, so why would they bother slapping their name on the crown if they barely put it on the dial? And the mesh band is excellent. It's a really tight weave, so there isn't much flex, but there's plenty of adjustment holes, and combining it with those articulated end links is a genius maneuver, giving you the best of both worlds and a really cohesive and integrated look. 
The loom is also excellent, really interesting. Look at how those circular markers in the dial create a hidden square that only appears after dark. Now we all know that the Omega Seamaster is famous for having a certain phallic symbol at the top of the dial. Standing proud as it were. Well the Serica has the same but in a more relaxed position. And as you can see here, at the end of the 20 minutes, it's still glowing very, very brightly indeed. It wears nicely too, thanks to those compact dimensions and relative light weight, and a super smooth and nicely adjustable band and clasp. A couple more micro moans though, I found the bezel action a little bit light, meaning it's gonna be easy to bump. I think despite the photos on the Serica website, therefore, this is not a hardcore dive watch, I would not be entrusting this one with my life under the sea particularly as the bezel markings are on the countdown rather than the count up side of things. And that mesh has very little breathing space, it's going to be sweaty in the hot summer months, plus there is no security fold over on the clasp, meaning if it bashes on something and unclips, your watch is heading for the ground at 10 meters per second per second. These minor gripes though are forgivable I think, but having an unproven movement that in fact has only proved to have issues is one that I would struggle with personally. Serica seem to have a lovely design aesthetic and people seem to be keen to buy these despite the known issues. I'm gonna be really interested to see what the brand does over the next five years, what their trajectory looks like. I will be especially interested to see if they do stick doggedly to soft rod movements. So there you have it, that is one sweet watch. It looks great both during the day and after dark. I love the split bezel, the steel and the ceramic. I love the high polished lugs and I love the really comfy mesh. But personally, I would not be buying one until they put either an Eta or a Solita in the back of it. If you like your micros left field and premium, why not check out either the Halios Fairwind or my review of a mythical Ming. Thanks for watching this one. I will see you all again in a future video, I hope.